we're back on Skywatchers Radio after a couple minutes of technical difficulties. We made it back on the air. I'm telling you, when you're going to deal with paranormal stuff, you, you better expect some paranormal activities to happen. And I think that's what's going on with Skype tonight. It's just having all kind of paranormal you know, things happening to it. And it's just, it's bizarre, it's weird. It's right up there with the stuff we like to cover, right? The bizarre and the weird. And uh, you know who <laughs> else is into the bizarre and the weird? Our guest tonight, Dino Ewald, who is the host of Paranormal Into the Night Radio. And uh, he's a hell of a, of a nice guy, too. He's a founder of PITN Network. And, uh, you know, I, I was on his show not long ago. Uh, he has a fabulous uh, show. And uh, hopefully one day he'll be off the of speaker and on PSN Radio. You never know. Uh, Dino, welcome to Skywatchers Radio, my friend. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Yeah, thank you, Angel. And Crystal, how are you doing? I'm I good. Nice talking to you. <laughs> we almost did not think it was going to happen. Yeah, that close, that close. But it, we got it going, so it's all good. That's oh, right. Goodness. That's how we roll. We make it miracles. Yeah. There you go. Cool. <laughs> Now, I first became aware of you, Dino, when uh, you reached out to me uh, a while back, and you're like, "Hey, dude, uh, can you be on my show?" And I was like, what? <laughs> "Do you do it on the bottom of me? What's wrong with you, kid? You want me on your show? What's wrong with you, son?" But then you, you had know, me you on, know, and it was it was awesome. But, you were great. Well, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think I got a different kind of style. I guess you know. I mean, we're all different, but uh, yeah. No, I I, I asked the questions and. Um, yeah, you were a great guest, man. That that was actually a really, really good show. And yeah, I was uh, thinking maybe you were going to pull an Art Bell there and you know say, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm a better uh, interviewee than an interviewer, whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, we won't get into that. But uh, yeah, you know, we, I, 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 it's funny because we brought, I brought that up earlier on the, the beginning. I don't know if you heard the beginning of the show, but I kind of yeah, I was that listening. In. Yeah, and I know you had a similar experience with Mister Bell. <laughs> yes, and, I did. Uh, and you actually uh, you inspired him in a way to uh, to open up a line uh, for uh, for stuff on his show early on when he came back to Dark Matter, which I want yeah. you to tell the audience about because I thought it was really cool. Tell the audience, go for it. Oh God, uh, well yeah, when, when um, Art Bell first came on, I mean we did talk back and forth a little bit through uh, messaging on Facebook and all that, uh-huh. and and of course very aware of uh, Paranormal Into the Night Facebook group and. Um, I wanted him to go, I mean, I think you guys know when he came back, he was, the show wasn't the same. It was a little different. I really still wanted that spookiness, that little dark, you know, thing that he had to his show. And, uh, he kept his open lines were, or special lines that he would do on, I think the Friday nights or whatever were not the best. I mean, one night he was asking me about names for the open lines and I gave him stuff like, you know, vampire hotline, uh, stuff like that. And, uh, he came back and, um, just really did not listen to anything I, uh, had to offer. And he opened up, uh, losing my mind line. Okay. First of all, uh, I think we're all losing our mind a little bit, but anyway, just a little bit, story. yeah, just a little bit, a little bit, especially with this election going on right now. Oh my god! Oh god! Oh, yeah, I don't. Jesus, Jesus. Hillary. Jesus. Anyway, <sighs> Mr. Losing Trump. your mind, line. but but yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, he um he went with that, and I'm like going, oh, you got to be kidding me! And everybody started coming on talking about I'm losing my mind because my girlfriend's doing this to me or this. I'm like going, what does this have to do with the paranormal? And uh, so I said, you know what, I'm going to call. And this was when uh, when I first started my my Paranormal to the Night Facebook group, it was technically Art Bell live chat because it was all about Art Bell's show. And that's right, how right. all of this started. And we were chatting back and forth. And I swear to God, we'd have a thousand posts Every night for our show, for Art Bell's show, just going back and forth. It was unbelievable. That's, was one of the greatest things that when it first started rolling. But, um, they're like, go ahead, call in, call in, call in. So I did. And they never knew about it, you know, because they really didn't think it was me. But I called in as a vampire, okay? And I told Art I was losing my mind. And I, I'm not patting myself on the back or nothing, but I did a hell of a job. Anybody can go look it up on YouTube under, I think, Midnight in the Desert uh, YouTube channel and just put in vampire uh, 
Midnight in the Desert, Art Bell, whatever. It'll pop up, I, or, or I could put the link somewhere. But I did an awesome job. I was losing my mind because hmm. something attacked me in the night, in the woods, um, and I was losing my mind because of the thirst I needed, the, the blood. And I was turning as I was talking to Art. And he was just, like, going with it for a good 10, 15 minutes. Um, and then he finally had enough, and he said, hmm, that's really, you know, just hung up, you know, after, you know, a certain amount of time. But it, it was actually, everybody said, that's probably the best thing I've heard since the frantic Area 51 caller. And um, I have to agree, I'm one of the biggest Art Bell fans <laughs> there is out there from the very beginning. And I had to put something into the show to make it exciting and make it what it used to be. And that's probably the highlight of the me and Art's relationship, you know, over the years. So, yeah, I did do that, and it was very, very interesting and very cool. So, yeah. Now, it's funny because I think we're, we've all been kind of influenced by Art. You know, the reason right. I got into radio to begin with was because of Art Bell. You know, we talked about that on, on your show. Mm -hmm. uh, the host that influenced me was, you know, Art Bell was one of the main ones. Phil Hendry, George Rodriguez, yep. Neil Rogers were the guys who really influenced me to get into doing this stuff. Uh, but Art, there was nothing bigger than Art Bell, really. Art Bell, you know, for this oh. genre, is the biggest thing ever. Yeah. Um, and, and it's funny that, you know, my interaction is a lot lesser cooler than yours. My interaction with him is like, yeah, I'm not a good radio interviewee. Oh, yeah, I'm just a good radio interviewer. <laughs> well, I'll tell In you, th that's exactly what happened to me. I mean, I, because I did, I mean, and, and I'm, not, I'm not making it out more than it was. It was just Facebook, a message back and forth, back and forth, you know, that kind of thing. Um I think at the time he was reaching out to as many groups as he can to because we the live chats popped up in tons of groups. I think you probably know that. I mean, there yeah. was uh, our I mean, there's still Heather Wade, you know, groups and stuff for people to chat, although five people chat a night. But um, mm. not put not putting her down or nothing. I'm just you know, it's a whole different ball game now in the uh, yeah. you know, in, in that whole, you know, uh, program and stuff. But um he he I, I said did the same thing I, I said hey Art, why don't you come on here and you know let me interview you I, I i won't talk about any of the controversy any of this i just want to talk paranormal with you and he said the same thing he said uh yeah. i'm i'm you know not very good at doing interviews i am much better at giving interviews so yeah same exact thing so and Which is like it's like more stupid because I, he's been on like Bill Gab, uh, the radio show. Well, th Bill that's Gab what I was going to say. Yeah. I th you must have asked right around the same time I did because I swear it was a couple days later or so. He was on Bell Gab and he put it all yeah. out there. Yeah. He, he he did a great interview. He, he even told um, oh, what was his name uh, on Bell Gab? I forget his name, but uh, he, he said this. Mike? No, he was the guy. I think he's from another country, Australia or. Oh. Jazz, Jazz Munda. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. And uh, he, he told him, he said, the, or no, maybe it was his co-host or whatever, but nevertheless, he said, this is going to be one of those shows that will go on forever, right? Like he's a biography or something like that. And I'm like going, oh, you know, <laughs> why couldn't you just come on and talk to me? You know, it would have been one of my you know, bucket list things. And yeah, I mean, I understand if he just does not want to do that kind of thing, but just like everybody, he picks, not everybody, but certain people pick and choose right. who they want to deal with, who's going to give them the most. Although I don't know how much bell gab really, you know, put that thing out there. Art could have done any show and it would have got spread around. So right. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I mean, get you, man. A, but here's here's the thing. Your show is a good show. I think we do a good show here. Uh, we no, no. all love Art Bell. That, that's the that's the best thing. You know, the most. The oh most important yeah, thing. we all, we all love Art Bell. We're mm -hmm. going to give him, you know, every every uh, opportunity to say what he wants to say. Uh, mm -hmm. We weren't going to, you know, especially on this show, we weren't going to be controversial, to, you know, with him or talk about right. something he didn't mm -hmm. want to get to. Uh, so it's going to be a very honest and uh, loving, you know, episode dealing with art and his history and, and stuff and. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, for him to close those channels and say, nah, you know, I don't want to do the show because I'm not going to get an interview or whatever the excuse is, to me, yeah. it's kind of cheap on his part. Because, like I told you when you invited me on your show, there's no way I'll say no to somebody who's asking me to be on their show. Because to me, that's a hell of an honor to be asked to be on somebody's show because that means that they want to hear from me. They, they, they care <laughs> enough to ask me to be on their show. You know, you have to stay humble also when you do this kind of stuff. And I'm a humble person. If anybody asks me, hey, can you be on my show? I'm going to do it because, you know, it's somebody asking, putting themselves out there and asking, why would I want to break that person's heart and, you know, just go against what they, you know, they're asking for? That, to me, is ridiculous, especially, I'm nobody special, and at the end of the day, Art Bell, yeah, he's a great personality, we love his radio show, but he's mm-hmm. just another guy. Oh, he's right, just a yeah. dude. He's just an old man living in Nevada or somewhere. <laughs> you know, let's just, let's be real on what it is. You know, at the end of the day, that's who Art Bell is. And he should be a little bit more humble than that. That's you know, my take on the whole thing. I still love you, Art. I still, you know, I wish you were on the air. I wish, you know, you hadn't retired for good for the 18th Same here. time. Yep. But, you know, Same it here. is what it is. It is what it is, man. Now, uh, getting on to your show, um, let's talk a little bit about your show because you deal with, by the way, you're making a whole lot of noise. Are you rattling around there? Are you wrestling with alligators? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, there's some spirits around me right now flying around. So um, this you're first here. time this ever happened. But, uh, I did, I did. no, no, I, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, I was having issues so with... serious, too. I was like, I know, wow, I know, really? I believe it. Like, <laughs> I yeah. had to pause for a second. I'm like, for real? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is it, the paranormal into the night, guys, so I believe it. <laughs> it's rats. Uh, I, I'm, I've got rats all around me. No. Well, we were having but, issues with the, the microphone, and, and you could probably hear everything I'm doing now because I'm using the, uh, a different uh, mic, so that's probably why. As long as you can hear me. Yeah, no, we can hear you. It's just it's weird. It's like I won't move. Scratchy. <laughs> it move is scratchy. It's, anyway. it, yeah, it's a little scratchy. No, it's fine. But it, but it sounds better than the other stuff you had before. Before it sounded like he was in the bathroom doing something else. <laughs> I'm saying what? Nice. Nice. Okay. There, there's oh, numbers boy. involved. That's all I'm saying. But mm-hmm. uh, getting back into your show, like let's talk about your show a little bit because it is a cool show, but you deal with mostly paranormal stuff. Uh, not so much UFO centric, but you are a believer in ufology. We talked about that a little bit. Uh, what kind of got you besides Art Bell? What got you, uh, you know, into the genre itself? Um, pretty much uh, from a very young age. I mean, uh, I, I was exposed to horror, and I mean, believe it or not, I think horror and paranormal kind of go together in a strange way. At, le- at least to me, because. Um, uh, I had grandparents who everywhere they moved, uh, any house they lived, there was activity going on. Um, and that's pretty much where I guess it, you know, it, it instills it in your head. And as you grow up, you know, it sticks with you. And then I hit a point when I got older, uh, where like everybody, I think you just start asking questions and, you know, I, I want to know if there's more to life than this. Uh, do we move on? Where did everything come from? Are there aliens? If there are, can they please come get me and take me away? Um, <laughs> you and me both, bro. You and you me know? both. You <laughs> know? Oh, I, if there was a bus stop, I'd be the first one there. I mean. Uh, you know, you'd, yeah. you'd have to fight for a spot with, with, uh, with Angel. <laughs> Y'all yeah. would, we'd all be sitting there. I think that would you be You and me, Chris, would be fighting it out right here. The three of us. Yeah, oh, my out. God. We'd rumble at the bus stop. But, yeah. And I mean, somewhere, the other, somewhere the other guy would be taking bets on who wins so he can make some money off of it because, you know. It's true. He'd be selling it. He'd be trying money. to sell it. It's yeah. true. The bookmakers, they do it all. But, anyways. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Continue your thoughts. No, yeah, I mean, it's it's just about uh, looking for answers. Um, you know, I'm, I'll lay it out there. I'm I'm a little bit scared of um dying, you know, and everything ending. So there you go. I mean, I, I, wa- I want actually some. That leads, that leads me to a, a, a granular question that you, you, that comedy just made. You're scared of dying, and mm-hmm. everything ending. Are you a religious person? Do you believe in heaven, hell, the afterlife, God, the whole shebang? Oh, Angel, man, we could talk for hours and hours about this subject, but um, am I religious? Uh, I'm not an atheist. I do believe there's a higher power, a higher being or energy or something. I know something created all of this uh, because it didn't all come from nothing. Uh, it's, it's impossible, you know. But then that just 
leads you to more questions. I mean, uh, I don't believe there's a, there was like there's a guy that you know made the earth uh, sit in the season. clouds with a beard and yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> and, and a lot of people. A lot of people will hate hearing that, though. But, you know, I mean, there's not one little iota of proof that I know. I, there's books and stories and uh, stuff like that that tells you, you know, God created Adam and Eve and this and that. And I'm not a creationist. I'm not a, you know, I, I'm not very religious. So the bottom line, uh, and I don't know. Uh, people who do know, I think, are going on faith. Um Right. If they if they say otherwise, it's mm-hmm. they they it's a story. I mean, people have yeah. passed on or, or not passed on, but uh, you know, near death experiences and stuff like that can kind of get you to say, "Wow, you know, okay, maybe there's something." But it always involves angels or I saw God or and you don't know if they're they took it in a different way. You know, I mean, what did they see? It's a light. Is that light God? I mean, what are you saying? So there's just so many questions to all of that. And I don't even know where to begin to, you know, answer I have that, a theory. You know? I have a theory on the, on the light that people see. Because if people say, oh, I see a tunnel and a light, right? Mm-hmm. That's usually what people describe. Right. And follow along here. What I think people are witnessing is their very first memory. The tunnel and the light, vagina mm-hmm. and the light when it opens. Oh, at the gynecologist, whatever, the gynecologist. Well, well, that's a tough one for me, too, I feel you. But, no, yeah, with that <laughs> moment of birth, right? I think that's the very first memory we have instilled in our mind. We just we don't remember it because it gets washed over with so many other memories that we record. But I think once you're dying, maybe you kind of revert back to the very first instance of your memories, and you just you, you relive hmm. that memory of being reborn, and you're seeing that light. Which is not leading you to the afterlife. It's just you know, it's your memory saying, "Ah, oh, this is a vagina canal, and you're about to be exited out of the vagina." That's <laughs> oh boy. That's yeah, well, hey, that's one take, take on it. <laughs> that's an interesting. I think I think what yeah. you see has a really a really severe bearing on what you believe. I really do. I really, that's really do. Too. When when you're locked I mean, into those experiences, I, I think Jackal that if you were you being you know what you believe, I think you would see something very different than what I would see. I re- and, and, and I based that on yeah. it very loosely, and I'm going to botch this because it was so long ago since I read about it. But someone did an experiment where they were uh, they were messing with people, and they were kind of feeding them. Um, it was, they were messing with electromagnetic pulses in the brain, and they wanted to see what they could, you know, what people would see when they were in this certain state. And what people saw had a real big bearing on kind of where they were personally. Because some people were like, "Oh my God, I yeah. saw angels," and other people were like, "No, it was a demon." And you know, the other people still were yep. like, "I just saw this really loving being." And they all, I mean, they weren't exposed to a different stimuli. It was the same stimuli, but they all saw something different. You know, right. so that so that I guess that really compounds the question about what's out there. Well, see, that, it, 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 they, 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 not to get you off, but they've also done the experiments like that, where they've been able to simulate the abduction phenomenon, the alien abduction phenomenon, to a T, in a laboratory where you know yeah. there, there was no abduction. Uh, they were just under, uh, you know, they were they were in deep sleep or they were messing with their brain, and they literally thought they were being abducted by aliens, and it was. Uh, this has been done. You can Google this. It's uh, it's uh, research that actually took place. So that also leads to other questions. Are, are we hallucinating abductions uh, for the most part? Is that part of a hallucination that people have when they wake up and they can't move? Because, you know, people do have that, um, I forget what it's called now. Um, sleep paralysis. What's the name? Sleep paralysis. Right? Well, thank yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> you know, people have sleep paralysis, and I suffer from sleep paralysis, by the way. I've had it many, many times in my life. Uh, wow. You wake up and you can't move, and you're like, oh, damn, move the finger. Move the <laughs> finger. Come on. Finger, please move. Prove that I'm alive. Oh, and then no. nothing happens. And you're like, all right, screw this. I'm going back to sleep. Maybe I'll wake up later. <laughs> then you wake up an hour later, and you're like in drenched in sweat. Or maybe that's just me, maybe. But, you know, you're, you know, you wake up, and you're like, oh, yeah, I can move all my faculties. They're all in order. Everything's good. Now, that doesn't mean that I was abducted by aliens, but some people do think that sleep paralysis is, uh, you know, uh, uh, an abduction phenomenon that's about to happen, and then you get abducted, and then you drop back. It could be. You never know. Maybe I've been abducted 20,000 times in my life. I don't know. But the point is that this kind of test uh, has been done 
in laboratories, and they have gotten the same results where people actually go through the sleep paralysis. They have what it feels like people in the room, and maybe they, well, maybe they do because they have doctors you know, working on them, so they feel presence in the room, but mm -hmm. they feel that presence in the room, and next thing you know, they're seeing little greys or little beings, you know, take them. And, you know, that's been done. That's, those studies are there. Uh, so that brings up a whole lot of questions. And really, the, the answer, I think, to a lot of this is, like what Crystal was saying, is it's all in our minds, is where you are in that point of your life, and when you believe it. You know, if you believe in aliens, uh, there's a good chance that if you have sleep paralysis, you're going to think, well, maybe I'm being abducted. Because you, you're a believer, right? And there's a lot more people that believe nowadays than 50, 60, 100 years ago. So since this subject is a lot more popular with folks, maybe that's why they're having sleep paralysis and they're thinking they're being abducted. And that's why maybe more and more people are like, yeah, I've been abducted and they're a second to Andromeda and now I know that we're going to have, have this happen and that happen and one day Andrew Besage is going to be president. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Boy, you are not letting that one go, are you? No, uh, I, I, I don't like Andrew Versace. But right? you know what, Angel, like I guy. tell you, I mean, that's the whole point um, to everything. I mean, everybody's got their own experience, and you could, they'll put their own spin on it. And, you know, like you said, nothing really happened, but they thought it did. So it's like, what are you to believe? And I'm not... I guess I am skeptical on everything. I want to believe a lot of these, you know, stories that come out, you know. Uh, and there's some really intriguing cases, like mm -hmm. with little children who come back who say they were this other person in, in a former life and they, they got killed. And Oh, they're those great. Really and, fascinating. Really and, and, fascinating. I'm a big believer in reincarnation. So, yeah, those I especially like those stories. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, even knowing that there's stories like that out there, I still am going, you know, you're never going to 100% believe until it happens to you, until you pass on or an alien comes and gets you or you see an actual ghost yourself or a true UFO up in that sky. I mean, otherwise, it's just, you know, hey, I think I believe, but not 100%. Um, cause I'm one of those people who have had stuff happen mostly when I was young, but never uh, when I've been a teen, older or an adult. So, uh, I question everything and that's kind of why I do my show and started it. I'm, you know, just to get some answers and it's always good to hear from a lot of different people and see what their stories are. Um, I mean, I, that's what I, my very first interviews were on YouTube and, uh, when Art stopped doing the show. And I just interviewed people from my group who said, hey, this happened to me. And these are just ordinary people who just said, hey, I, I, you know, and I contacted and I said, hey, uh, why don't you tell me about that story? I, I'd like to hear it. And it seems genuine, comes from the heart. Some are even scared to talk about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yes. So that's what I'm trying to get to the bottom of, you know, um, just get some answers and and have a little bit of fun with it, so, you know. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. I think a lot of the, or some of the best uh, stories are untold, in, in, especially in ufology, or in, in paranormal mm -hmm. also, but in ufology, for example. We were at the MUFON uh, Symposium a few weeks ago, me, Crystal, and Alan, who's not on with us right now. And uh, while well, they were kind of like doing their thing, and we were kind of off air for a little bit, I think, uh, Crystal, you were at one of the uh, shows watching a, you know, watching a lecture or something, and Alan was trying to sell something to somebody. I don't know what the hell he was doing. I was sitting with Frank Bennett. <laughs> He's remember, making a remember sales Frank pitch. Bennett? Yeah, he was completely. That's why he did it the entire time, sales pitch <laughs> or pitching something. But remember Frank uh, Bennett, who was sitting across the table from us at the uh, symposium? Mm-hmm. I do. Okay. He was there. Uh, we started, you know, we struck up a conversation um, about his book and, you know, his abduct, you know, his not so much on an abduction phenomenon, but the the thing that happened to him is an experience. And then this African American gentleman walked up and started asking him about the book. And Frank started telling him the whole story about what happened and this and that, which, by the way, was very funny because it's an African American gentleman. And what Frank experienced was a really dark, really really dark, dark black creature in the woods. And just him oh, saying boy. that to an African American person was hysterical because the expression <laughs> the African American made. The gentleman made, mm -hmm. like, he, mm -hmm. he looked, yeah, this is like the darkest black <laughs> thing I've ever seen. And it was like a humanoid thing. And he jumped and 
Then he landed on the tree and oh, and I can only and imagine. I won't it was so nothing. funny, Crystal. It was so funny. Like, the guy <laughs> looked at him like because this guy was like white dude. He was literally like the guy telling the story is like yeah, generic white, white guy. <laughs> yes, like not even a Latino like you know, no, super white like, guy. And, and, white and guy. he's like. This yeah, this really black creature just like jumped on, and, and then the guy who's an African American gentleman looks at him like, yeah, right. You never seen a black guy before. That's what's going on here. Uh-huh. Oh boy! But, oh, but as we're as we're sitting there, and we get and we get past this awkward part of the story, right? And we're talking to to him about the, you know the experience. I asked the gentleman, I was like, "Have you had a paranormal experience?" And he's like, "Oh man, let me tell you, um, I've had paranormal activity happen to me since I was a little kid." And I, and I was like, "Really?" And he started going about his own abduction case. Uh, that happened to him as a child. Uh, it's followed along over the years. He's been supposedly abducted like a dozen times in his life. And the guy started like literally like shaking as he's telling his story. And, oh, no. you know, that, that tells me that there's a, a level of authenticity there. And I asked him, have you ever written a book or anything? He's like, no, man, no, no, no. Because just being out here and mingling with the uh, MUFON crowd is, you know, yeah. doesn't get me excited. And just to see other people that are kind of like either experiencers or writers that have, that are dealing with this stuff, you know, gives me some courage of coming out and talking about it, you know, maybe publicly one day. But I have, I'm, I have no interest in really going public right now or, or saying anything to the media about what I've experienced. And it's not just something that he's experienced, his family's experienced, that his father went through something similar. Uh, his kid has, is uh, being an experiencer also. So it's, you know, it, there's a lineage thing going on here, which is very common in ufology, where family members are kind of like, uh, you know, ta- they're like tagged like animals in the wild, right? Where, it, you know, it, they are continually uh, being experiencers throughout their lives, but their family members also get you know, abducted and they, and they go through it as well. And, uh, you know, the story was just really captivating. And I was like, bro, you got to be on the show with us, man. Your story is better than half of the stuff we've heard <laughs> in the symposium. Are you kidding me? And he oh, was yeah. like, no. Maybe I'll think about it. He said he was going to come back the next day. He never came back. I think he was just scared to be on the radio and talk about it. But to me, a person like that and listening to his story, and I forget his name, by the way. Shame on me. But mm-hmm. um, to, you know, listening to his story, really, that's the kind of person that I, I would say, you know what? There's truth there because you know this is not a person who's seeking out fame. He's not trying to write a book and get famous off of it. He's not going out on lectures to make money off of this thing. The guy's a regular worker. He works at some big company. Uh, he makes a good living. Uh, he's again, he's not somebody who's you know just uh, trying to seek publicity for something that's happened to well, him. Well, I'll tell I you have that, issues with people I, do that think, when they go out and they seek publicity for something yeah. that happened twenty years ago. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I, I was going to say I, I think that's why there's so much skepticism in the field, and because. Your ordinary person, like the guy you were just talking about, those people are out there, and they're ordinary people who are who have had these experiences, but are scared to talk about it and don't come out, don't really right. write books. They say no, 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 no. It just gets me too. My anxieties, panic, whatever uh, will come up. Yeah, you know, these are the real people who really experienced what they experience, and the mm-hmm. people out there who are the making the money. The big names, the people who got some wild stories, uh, they're making a living on this. And it's hard to bl- – not saying that some of them might not have experienced stuff, but for the most part, these people are making a living off of these stories. And that's where you get the ordinary, everyday Joe looking at the whole field in general and saying – yeah, you know, what are you talking about? This is all fake. No, this is real. Um, so I, I think that's just a big downer in the whole, you know, paranormal field. You know, you, do you get what I'm saying? Oh, totally, Absolutely. totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's I'm unfortunate, more, but yeah. Yeah, I'm much more inclined to believe that person who kind of maybe hesitantly wants to come on the air versus the guy right. who's like, I have written five books about what happened <laughs> to me, my dad, my mama, my cousin, yep. you know, and not to say that either one of those people are lying, but you're right. right. You just you get a little jaded by it. And I don't want to mm-hmm. and I don't want to trash anybody's livelihood either, because I know how hard it is, to, you know, to make a living off of something. So I'm of not course. knocking it. I don't want to knock it at all. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, you, you have the phonies out there and the phonies are that's what they're doing. They're making a living off of this. Well, it makes people yep. like us dig so deep to get a real story. You know, you've got yeah. to get rid of about 10 or 15 people who just want to sell something or 
you know, do this or that to get to the real person with a really cool story that doesn't have a book, doesn't have nothing to sell, doesn't, you know, it's, so it's, it's makes it hard on us, you know, and, yeah. uh, which by the way, this is why I believe certain cases like, uh, for, you know, we had her on the show, uh, Kathleen Martin, but uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, Betty and Barney Hill story. I believe that story because they weren't trying to seek publicity for what happened to them. Right. In fact, Barney Hill was trying to bury that story before it even came out. He didn't want to talk about it. He, he had no interest in talking about it. Speaking of, of African American, uh, he was an African American gentleman in the 60s, married to a white woman, mm-hmm. went to the civil right. rights movement. He was working for NAACP. The last thing these people wanted was to be talking about being abducted by aliens. It was already bad enough. They're going through some stuff that back then was considered taboo in a racial dating, you know, and he's going through this, uh, civil rights stuff and, you know, it's, it that was a completely different era than we are in right now when it comes to like the way we deal with each other. And back then, the last thing this interracial couple wanted was to add more shit to the pile. And adding an, an alien abduction basically is adding more shit to that pile. They didn't want that. They wanted to keep that completely off the radar, and it got leaked by other sources to the point that they got bombarded with media coverage trying to ask them, hey, uh, Barney, what happened? You know, they, they, Betty, what's going on? And it got to the point that they couldn't hold off anymore. They had to, like, set the record straight because people were, like, you know, manufacturing stories and, and giving details of stuff that didn't happen to them. And they were like, you know what? This is all bullshit. Let's tell the true story of what happened. And, you know, they were validated, I think, when... Uh, Betty Hill, uh, when she, you know, gave the star map that she gave, and it was kind of like uh, proven to be accurate ten years right. later by NASA. Yes, that that's what to me, you know, makes that story so authentic. And mm-hmm. the fact that they didn't want to come forward at first, that tells me there's authenticity there. Uh, you know, there's also the Travis Walton case. Here's a guy who's a logger. He has no interest in UFOs or ufology. He's with his crew. They're out in the woods somewhere. Stuff happens. He gets abducted. He's taken for five days. People thought that his uh, crew members killed him. They all had to pass lie detector tests to just uh, not be in prison. And then he just shows up miraculously, even though there's a manhunt for him in Snowflake, Arizona. And he just shows up out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, oh, wait, uh, let's give him a bunch of lie detector tests. He passes them all. Throughout the years, mm-hmm. right? And and this is a guy who kept working at the same company he worked for, you know, when he got abducted. Like, he retired 20 years later from that company. So, yeah, he wrote a book. Yeah, they made a movie. But he didn't get rich off of that, you know, book. He made, he made a little bit of money off of it. But you know, right. he wrote the book because people were embellishing what happened. People were, you know, making up stuff. So he said, okay, I'm going to write my book. And based on what my re- memories are, this is what happened to me. So get, let's get the record straight. And it happened years and years after his abduction, like literally a decade and a half after. That's when his book came out, or a decade after. So, you know, it's not like Whitley Strieber's of the world, who is, you know, yeah, he writes a, a book communion. Great. But he's also a science fiction writer. Right. Right. And, and right. horror writer. Wolfen. And horror yeah. writer. So, yeah, his he had a great book, but how real is it? Mm-hmm. That's a very good. That's uh-huh. a very good question. I know. And, I mean, you know, like, in I'm, that situation, you'd really have to judge the character. So, those, for example, say I get off this call, guys, and and I go to bed, and I get abducted by aliens, and I tell you about it tomorrow, Jack. I'm a science fiction writer <laughs> with a big imagination. How many people are going to believe me? You know. You know. <laughs> I mean, I, I would believe you, you know? because I be, I know that you know, who you are, but. Right. I can't blame somebody for saying, ah, she's full of it. Because, you know, exactly. you are a science fiction writer. You know, it is what it is. If Steven Spielberg or George Lucas tomorrow came on and said, hey, uh, we're abducted and anally probed by aliens. You know? Yeah. Sorry, George. <laughs> Not You're totally like, believe I, I could see the aliens right. laughing. I could see them laughing going, ah, we just abducted George Lucas. They're never going to believe <laughs> We gave him a real Star Wars up the butt. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Get out the galactic probe! <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, I mean that's. Are you a little though. chubby to be a stormtrooper, there, uh, George? Go ahead. <laughs> oh. No, so I, 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 I love Whitney. Oh, go ahead. I just uh, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but just no. curiously because you've you know talked to and interviewed a whole lot of people. What's a story that's really stuck out for you as, as you know as something that kind of I don't know <laughs> maybe made you a believer or something you just you know that's always stuck with you and you know made you shake your head when you heard it or you know something cool like that. Oh my God! I, I it probably would be a couple of the more recent ones that, and they're not good ones. I mean, are you asking me for just? 
a, a it great. It doesn't have to be. It, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> it doesn't have to be amazing. It's always great if it is. But if it's one of those, like, are you for real, bro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah, I got a couple of them, and uh, I mean, the, the one guy uh, I interviewed. Um, I guess I could say his name. He's got a book out there. Is David Gutty, and uh, he, he can. He reaches. Well, he, he moved into a house, and there was a some kind of energy vortex behind his house and he was able to uh he started speaking to the spirits uh first of all he said he was always able to from childhood okay so his whole life but he just so happened to be able to move into a house that had an energy vortex that it was like a freeway of spirits you know going back and forth and what are the odds of that I'm telling you, man, it was a freeway of spirits. Oh, yeah. And uh, he, but that's not the thing that got me. It was the, who, who he spoke to. He, he sat down and interviewed. Okay. The, uh, Cause I was really, get, he's a demonologist too. Okay. So I, I wanted to get down to the brass tacks of demons. What are they? Um, are they, you know, spirits who have passed on? He basically said they were fallen angels, okay? And he said there were okay. 500 fallen angels, okay? A lot. Uh, Crap. That, that is a lot of them, yeah. But, um, and, and he interviewed uh, quite a few of them. And what he would do, and, and the other thing that he said was before the 500 angels had fallen, there were 12 other fallen angels, something like that. I, I'm sorry if I'm getting this a little mixed up because it was all all over the place. But it was basically the Greek gods like Zeus and um, Aphrodite and Athena, all those people. And he okay. sat and he sat and talked to them. And okay. he, yes, he did. He and, and he brought them in the house, sat them at the table. He said, and um, basically. T- conducted an interview, talked to them because he was able to speak to the spirits and uh, eventually was able to talk to Lucifer. He asked to speak to him through God. He asked God, can I speak to Lucifer? And God said, yes. So he, he sat and he got, he said pretty much a camaraderie. Uh, Lucifer is not as evil as you think he is. Um, and he sat and talked to him and he actually, Lucifer actually got him in contact with the original 12, uh, Greek gods to talk to. So, um, that was probably the most out there story I've ever heard. And he, uh, what else can I say about this? I mean, he pretty much said that because I asked him, in all this time, nothing ever came and tried to attack you or uh, anything evil or, or anything like that. And he said he did get some activity and some, you know, scratches and some stuff from a, a entity, which was a demon. I said, OK, a fallen angel. And um, he said, yes, but he reached out to Lucifer and Lucifer took that demon and got rid of it for him. Oh, um, what a swell guy. That was oh, nice. he was so nice to him. And um he he yeah pretty much and I, and I asked him how why would he do that isn't Lucifer evil isn't he and he basically said no I mean you know and he did get to the thing that you know there's there's good and evil there's got to be a balance and uh, God and Lucifer kind of work together and to keep this balance and and I kind of asked him you know why does there need to be a balance why can't everything just be good. I don't see where good balances evil and evil balances good. Uh, you know, th- that's just my thought. It, may, it totally, it totally makes no sense, right? Like, it why doesn't. would God allow the, there to be evil so that people could suffer? I mean, the, the whole story makes absolutely no sense. It's like a fourth grader with Down syndrome came up with the story. It really does. Yeah. There's got to be a good guy I, I, and a bad guy, mm-hmm. and they got to be fighting with each other, and then the good guy is going to uh, impregnate a virgin on Earth, and it's going to and this virgin. <laughs> so far, uh, she's going to she's going to she's going to carry his seed, right? Mm. And this seed is really him incognito, right? This okay. seed is going to go to Earth, and he's going to die for the original sin, which the good guy created to begin with. So well, he created the sin that he's going to send himself, claim it's his son, but it's really him, and he's going to die for that sin, which it really did nothing because we're still sinning. <laughs> Ta-da! Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, 
The whole yeah, thing it, makes no sense. No, it, it makes no sense. And and I cut towards the end. And this all came out towards the end of the interview. And I was just like going, wow, you saved this for the very end. And this is just tripping me out. And I don't get it. And, uh, and, and I'll never get the whole, you know, what? if we get down to the whole good and evil thing, uh, I think it, again, has nothing to do with, God and Satan work and the, I mean, that's all your Bible stuff and all that. And, um, I'm not a Bible thumper or I, I believe that people who think, want to think good things like spirituality and stuff like that. I think you can heal your body. I, I think your mind is stronger than, and, and than you think it is. It's very intricate. You know, we just don't know about it, you know, and, um, so I, but I believe that we have free will. So I think when, a soul is put into – that's if this is the case, okay, because I don't know this 100%. But I, overthinking it over all this time, I'm thinking free will makes the most sense because if there was a higher being, why would you let all this – and I ain't even going to go into – you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. We could talk serial killers, uh, kidnapping, abduction, everything. Why would anybody in charge of that let that go on? I don't care. Right who it is but if there is a sort of energy that gave you the opportunity to okay your your energy you're a soul you can inhabit a being on this planet but know that you know whether it's a learning process or what whatever happens there i have no control over that it's you're right. a living living being uh, so i can see that case being made even though that's even still, I, I just, I can't take all this evil on this planet. That's why I want a ship to come get me and take me away. Mm-hmm. But it may I take me you. to another planet where <laughs> the same stuff's going <laughs> it's on. even worse. <laughs> so, or know, worse, yeah. Because uh, I'm a real big spiritual person, I think. And mm-hmm. that's that's a real hard topic. It is because, I it you is. know, I, I, I believe kind of like you do, Dino, that there is that one source. But I don't think that it's, you know, it's it's that judgy voice that's you know secretly going to you know send me to hell if i don't follow 10 rules you know i don't right. or whatever the rules are like i don't believe that at all because it just that's a very human quality that doesn't seem to me to be the quality right. of something that made all this but mm-hmm. as far as is good and evil goes if you break it down to almost like what you were saying free will mm-hmm. and if it comes to and it's going to sound horrible especially when you talk about you know those horrible things like being a serial killer at that but if it comes down to a choice of experience experience Mm -hmm. then it's not a balance but it makes sense and i don't want to go like Mm. too deep into that but i mean if if you just think about it that way it's not so much that light and dark balance each other out is but how do you know about the other if you don't experience it so if you look at life even as horrible as it can be by something that needs to be experienced so you understand it then it 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 doesn't excuse it it doesn't forgive it but it almost makes it make a little bit more sense like how do i know i'm happy if i've never been it you know how do i know this is a horrible thing if i don't if i can't you know it, it, you know it just it literally it's it's about the experience you know it's like when they huh. say the gods well, want to be like us because they because they can't feel you know because they're so you know they're so up there that they don't know what the human experience is like and so that's why they're always coming down here and banging the human women you know they want to have that moment so i, I mean that's, that's kind of what it is women. that's what it is they just want to bang human women. but here's yeah. the thing and let me wow. piggyback off of that real quick uh because you know when you talk about good and evil, you talk about heaven and hell, mm-hmm. you know, God and the devil, Lucifer, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, if you do good, you go to heaven. If you do bad, you go to hell, right? Jim Jeffries, who's one of my favorite comedians, has a very funny skit about this where he's like, you know, I don't even want the option of going to heaven because it's going to be boring as hell up there. You have your grandparents. <laughs> you, have some, you have some of your family members. You have your uncle who used to touch you, and you're like, hey, how'd you get in here? Uncle used to touch oh, me. Man. Oh, that's right. You used to work for the church. That's right. You were, you know, yeah, you were. <laughs> but here, here's the thing. Hey, what's hell like? Hell is, you know, for the people who do evil, right? People that who did bad in their life. People that who, who murdered, shot, killed. <laughs> Why would that be a bad place for you if that's where you are? Why would the devil 
take it out on you. You should be one of his boys. If he's evil, he should look at you and be like, hey, man, welcome to hell. It's going to be awesome. You're going to have a great time. we got a <laughs> line of coke on this hooker for you. Come on, snort away. That's what the hell's going to be like. That's what it should be like if, if you're, you know, a bad person. It should be more of evil that you're into. It shouldn't be like, oh, you're going to go up you know, down there and uh, they're going to put a pineapple up your ass every five minutes next to it. <laughs> oh, that should not be the case. It's harsh. You're, it should, it should you not be harsh. torture. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, it yes. shouldn't even be like that, honestly, because let's be real. If you're evil and the devil's evil... He should look at you with you know with joy in his eyes. Hey, you're one of me. You're one of my people. Come on, enjoy yeah. you know eternity in hell. Enjoy all the pleasures of hell. Enjoy this or that or whatever. It shouldn't be scary. It shouldn't be like Hellraiser. It shouldn't be a pineapple, pineapple up the ass. It shouldn't be anything of the. <laughs> you're of really nature. on this pineapple. <laughs> I <laughs> what, love what pineapple. pineapple? Just wow. not up the ass. Well, you know, just... you look at a pineapple and you say <laughs> that will hurt. <laughs> you know exactly. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> But it shouldn't be anything evil is my point, though. It should, or it shouldn't be evil, uh, to a torturous degree. I mean, yeah, it's evil in the sense of, well, you know, you're not in heaven because you didn't do good when you were alive, granted. But, you know, again, if you are doing stuff that the devil approves of, why will he torture you? Why would there be torture in hell? Right. Why would it be eternal right. flames or fires? Question. You know, yeah, and Jim Jeffries, you know, phrased it a lot funnier than I did, and it, it's brilliant. If you guys want to ever uh, find out uh, about great comedy, listen to Jim Jeffries. He's an uh, amazing comedian, but he's really on the religious tip when he talks about this stuff. He makes perfect sense. It's like uh, like uh, George Carlin did uh, yep. when he was alive and he talked about religion. He makes perfect sense because, uh, you know, these are brilliant minds that are bringing up real topics uh, about what could be the afterlife. And that's why I don't believe in a heaven or a hell because it just it makes no sense at all, story wise, it just it's it doesn't gel. Yeah, there's a yin and a yang. I believe that. There's a there's karma. I believe in that. Uh, you know, I believe in a lot of these things, but heaven and hell it just doesn't jive for me because it makes absolutely no sense. Now, could there be something after our life? Yeah, I'm open to that. I'm open to that uh, possibility. I think that you know the universe, as I said on one of the shows previously. The universe got created because there was this eternal being that got bored of being alone in the middle of the void of space and said, you know what, screw this, man. This is boring. He exploded <laughs> or it exploded into a, a quadrillion galaxies all over the place and said, you know what, I'm spreading myself all over the place. And in essence, we're all part of God because God is everywhere. He's in us. You know, we're part of this eternal being that just has always been there. And when we die, we kind of maybe go back to this collective energy, this grid. But I don't think it'll be a heaven or a hell. It'll be just a collective grid of energy that, you know, maybe there's a consciousness there. And maybe, just maybe, it's kind of like going into the matrix. Maybe this reality is outside of the matrix. But maybe when we die, we go back into a matrix. And then that reality is what our reality is after this reality. But again, I don't think it's going to be a heaven <laughs> so or a hell deep. scenario. I really don't well, think I, so. you know, and I and I'd ask Angel again too. And you guys can't hear my stomach grumbling, can you? No, I hope it ain't. I hope it ain't coming through the speaker, man. It, it is so no, loud no, in this no. room right now. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but I I wanted to get back to that Angel just real quick, and you can make it real quick and say you know whatever. But again, you're talking to Matrix, and there is this. There's a beginning to everything. If that's the beginning, the Matrix, the energy from the very beginning what created that what made that spark because i can't see it just makes no sense to me something had to be from something right how can something come from nowhere well that's that's how we humans look at it but we're looking yeah, at it as a human it, being, as, it's, as a human It's experience. hard for me, too. But, I mean, when you think it's about the matter the the can, neither, can neither be created nor destroyed, You, I mean, your brain your brain explodes when you think about that because you're like, what? How? But that's that's what matters. Exactly. There, there's, there's, you almost think that there has to be a beginning to something, right? So, but no, apparently, I mean, we're, but, you know, I yeah, you're you're hurting my brain. Let me stop thinking about <laughs> no, it. No, that's the question. I've been, that's the question. I've been, brain melting. I've been going over for years and years and years and racking my brain. I think even that as a teenager. A, I'm like, you know, that's a how? whole level of consciousness that I don't think we're at yet. That that's uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think we definitely have to shed the human body before we even begin to grasp that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, here science tells us there was a big bang right in the beginning. That they, they were, you know, I as think far it was way before the big bang. I think the big well, bang. Yeah, no, no, but here, this galaxy. Follow, follow, 
follow along here. Mm-hmm. As far as we're concerned, they, they say, well, there's the Big Bang. Then many, 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 many years later, science said, well, before the Big Bang, there had to be something. You know, something caused the Big Bang, right? Mm-hmm. That's where I'm going at with this. You know, the Big Bang was this energy grid that was just there. Science explains it as M-brain. You guys ever heard of M-brain theory? I have no. not, no. I guess, I guess I'm the only nerd here on, on the call. M-brain <laughs> is, it, think, of, think about it as a loaf of bread in the middle of space, cut into many slices, right? And this loaf of bread is the energy grid of, of bread. And when the explosion happened, it happened in many different dimensions and levels, right? That's why they think, they theorize that there's parallel universes, right? So before this explosion happened, there was literally an energy grid called the M-brain. And that is what they believe is what caused the explosion, caused everything to, to become matter. But what happened before the M-brain? What was there before? Was that always there? Exactly. You're always going to go back to that question of, like, well, right. what was before yeah. that? What was before that? What was before that? And I don't think we're ever going to get to the, the final definitive answer because, you know, we just can't go back in time that far. We just can't. It's we so unfortunate. Machine, unfortunately. Yes. We, unfortunately. We need a time yeah. machine. <laughs> but maybe, <laughs> just maybe, least. just I'd maybe when we die, the time we, I would. Yeah, you know what? And, and I have a funny uh, theory about time machines. I'll, I'll show that in a second. <laughs> but uh, the, you know, the the thing is, you know, I don't. Th- maybe when we die, and you know, we get to that next eternal life, that matrix, whatever it is, that we go back into. Uh, maybe then we'll be able to, you know, just hit rewind and, and go all the way back to then, then, and not be now, now, because hmm. then. We're then, then, back then, and we could see everything that happened then. And then and we then go, we'll go we started down from now. this? <laughs> yeah. It, was like, you know, it looks like a dust, bunch of man. dirt. I mean, what's going on here in this man, space? You know what? One of the more <laughs> trippy esoteric books that I have ever read uh, was The Secret of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. You read that hmm. book, boy. Hmm. That's, uh, yeah, I don't know Ooh, if you I'm got writing it down. Yeah, check that one out. It's uh, it's big. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's uh, it's like an I'll encyclopedia. It. Yeah. Is it on audio book? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, that manly Does that have pictures? Boy, it, uh, there are pictures. There are pictures. Awesome. I like pictures. There yeah. are definitely pictures, but uh, so yeah. They got no, shoes uh, on Mars in them? Yeah. There, there might be, yeah. No, this, I mean, this goes back to like, this dude claims that at one point we were walking, talking plants, like type stuff going on in this book. Like, it's wow. it's serious. Yeah. Well, that's cool, <laughs> yeah. though. Yeah. 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 Retro I mean, sci fi stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it really, I mean, and he literally starts, it's like an in the beginning type deal, all the way up to, and it, liter- it literally is the secret teaching of all ages, like all things. It's it's like the Bible. Here's the killer uh, killer theory for you, uh, Crystal. In an infinite universe that we live in, right, we supposedly mm-hmm. think that space is infinite. Right. Uh, that means there's infinite planets, infinite universes, or, or infinite solar systems, I should say. Uh, mm-hmm. Infinite galaxies, infinite planets with infinite possibilities. I guarantee you, somewhere out there, there are plants that talk and oh, yeah. walk around. Oh, oh I've no doubt. I've no. I mean, just and this is why I don't understand why people don't believe in UFOs. Like, you don't have to necessarily believe that the government is, you know, taken over by reptilians or every alien abduction yeah, story David, you I... hear. You know, <laughs> but but you know, it wouldn't it be funny if it's true? I swear to God, it probably oh, is. But anyway, the. Space is so infinitely large. It's just so big. Like, how can you not think that there's something else out there? Like, I of don't. Course. That's what kills me. <laughs> that is, and, and that what that's what pisses me off too. We're you know, we're we're on this planet, and we can't get off of it to experience any of it. I know. I mean, we just get to look at these little lights in the sky and go. Ah, oh, it's paradise. Blurry images. <laughs> Gino, you sound Blurry. like me. We're like kindred spirits right now. I'm, I'm so <laughs> I'm bored you. with planet Earth. I'm just like, gee, why did I pick this? Whose oh, idea you know, was amen, this? Amen. Amen, Crystal. <laughs> just like, you know, oh, we're looking God. at our check when we get it, and we can't go to, like, Germany, or we can't go to Italy. Um, it's the same thing, you know. Uh <laughs> We can't get to where we want to go. It's it's kind of very irritating, but oh well. It is. <laughs> here's a tri- here's a trippy one for you. You can't fly over the South Pole either. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
That's can't true. Why is that? Hmm? Why is that, huh? Why is that? Hey, wait, you can't. No, so hang on. So you can't, like, literally, because if you try, the government will shoot you down, or, like, you can't. You can't literally, like, you can't buy a, tr- a ticket, and no airline flies over the South Pole, period. And if you try to the charter a plane, can't do it. They won't allow you. They won't allow you. That's in. See, this is why I need to be rich, y'all, because we would do a lot of illegal shit. No, here's, <laughs> Let me just the here's the question. The we do. <laughs> no, I think that's the North Pole. But here's the, here's the thing. Right, I know. Why? Why? Yeah. Why is it that we can't fly over the South Pole? That's a very that's yes. I mean, there's so the, much about. I think that this. I actually think this planet is probably really, really, really interesting, and they've just been hiding it from us. And that I think that makes me angry almost as much as I just can't get on a spaceship and leave. That all yeah. the stuff that's yeah. probably here that now, we, the fl- so you gotta think the, the South Earth Pole is the sh- most remote place on the planet, so it's the best right. place to do whether it's government or an alien race. Uh, that's the perfect spot to be out of the way and do whatever you need to do. Now the flat earthers will have you believe that it's because if you go over the South Pole, you just keep going and going and going, and you'll never stop. Because, you know, the theory is it's not so much that the Earth is flat and you fall over the edge, yeah. but that the South Pole is the barrier and you can't go past that barrier. Because there's one universal truth. No matter what part of the planet you go in on, you're always going to end up at the South Pole. Interesting. Hmm. You go south, you're going to end up there, period. Right. right. The only way to navigate around the planet is to go sideways. You know, go west or east, whatever. But you right, go right, south, right. You go south. You always hit the South Pole, no matter what part of the planet you're you're in. And then you have a problem. You can't go over that barrier. You can't fly over it. Because if you could fly over it, you would eventually go on the other side, and you will be able to go back on the water, and you'll be able to go over the planet, right? And you can prove that, hey, the Earth is round, right? Now that makes crap. That makes it, oh, shit. Now I've got to think about this hollow Earth thing or not the flat Earth thing again, because it's almost like it's like playing a video game where you've hit the end of the map. (laughs) <laughs> well, you could you could think about yeah. just about anything, right? That there could be a portal there that every UFO yeah. we possibly see on this planet, that's where they go in, and and that's where uh, they come out. You know, yeah. Wow. So who knows? Wow, that's really really interesting. Why it's you trippy. can't go there? No, it's true. In, in fact, here, here's a crazy thing: the UN signed a treaty uh, many years ago, so maybe a couple of de- a few days, decades, like two three decades ago. Uh, they signed a treaty. Now, I'm talking about Russia, America, a bunch of different countries. They hated each other. All got together and signed this treaty saying that nobody was going to go past that barrier. That there's not, nobody's going to allow chartered planes or anybody to go past that barrier. All these countries that hated each other all got together and said, yeah, no, we agree on this one thing. We can't, we can't go, we can't go there. Why has nobody anymore. done this? Someone, why, where are all the rule breakers at? Somebody <laughs> needs to know how to fly a plane, lie about where they're going, and do this. I can't believe it. Can't. Somebody has. Come on, what is going well, on? I've heard, I've heard a, a, a secret told to me that there's a uh, all the 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 richest of the rich and the elite have a uh, uh, there's just a one of the largest, most beautiful hotels down there there you could possibly imagine, and that's why they don't let anybody down there. Because of the so. hotel for the rich, I don't know. Mm. Well, maybe they got Dubai for that. I'm That's just saying. Say I'm just saying. <laughs> That's what they go to sacrifice people to Satan. It's like a big Bohemian yep. Grove. Yep. <laughs> so. Yeah, there you go. They say hell is hot. Now it's actually really cold. This is South Pole. Man. <laughs> really cold. <laughs> now you know Admiral Byrd flew over the North Pole and he found supposedly an entrance yep. to a cavern or a cave, which supposedly led him to what he thought was a. You know the hollow Earth. Some people are saying that it actually was a portal to another dimension. Um, cool. You know, what's your take on that? Do you know what do you, what do you think about that? Um, the story's interesting. I mean, that's for sure. Uh, I mean, again, unless we get some more, you know, information on it or somebody finds it, you know, it's just a story. Uh, I love the story. I, I believe it can. I believe it's possible. Um, I'm not going to say that the entire Earth is, you know, hollow, but a uh, large enough area that could inhabit life. And, I mean, look at the strange life that there is on this planet. Uh, I, I mean, it's it's possible, but the story's great. I love it. Um, I believe there were soldiers marching there during World War II, I believe, 
And well, there, there's stories about Nazi uh, Nazi troops right. leaving uh, Nazi Germany and escaping into the North Pole and yeah, and that's uh, going towards that entrance. Uh, <laughs> people think that Hitler escaped uh, right. to the to the North Pole, and there's also people who think he escaped. I think it was what Peru or right in Peru. Or countries. I, th- I think Argentina. Uh, yeah, yeah. Argentina, yeah, and supposedly he died there. Year, you know, many years later. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of different stories. You know, right. there's just again, there's just stories. Uh, but again, we, we're told, you know, these stories, but you know, the governments, they don't really go there and experiment or really show us anything. And the, the, the thing that really sucks is that we can't as individuals prove it ourselves because if we do, we'll go to prison. All right. We're limited That's and, we're, and yeah. we're stuck in our lot, you know, day to day lives and most we're, 99% yeah, we're living, of, yeah, we're living a Truman show. That's what we're living in. Yeah. Mm. That would piss me off. That would piss me off beyond <laughs> anything else. Oh my goodness, I'd be so mad. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about it, look, that movie in, a, in a essence is a brilliant movie because that is essentially what the flat earthers believe—that we're living in this kind of a Truman Show reality where, you know, there's uh, people on the outside of the bubble or whatever, or the outside of the dome uh, that are controlling everything, and they're you know our controllers. Uh, and uh, that, you know, we're living this fake reality and they're just experimenting on us. Kind of like Dark City. You guys seen the movie Dark City? Oh, mm-hmm. I love that movie. Yeah. Really it's a movie. great movie. <laughs> and that maybe something like that is taking place by some beings out there. Uh, it doesn't exclude the, the possibility of there being in outer space with many planets and galaxies and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just there, you know, we're on this controlled environment. And I kind of believe that we are in a controlled environment, whether we are in a flat earth or not, or whether it's a sphere or a flat earth, we are in a controlled environment. And I've, I've said this before on the show here that I think the fact that we're told that we can't go back to the moon or we haven't been back to the moon or we don't travel into deep space, that our technology is not there yet, it's because the powers that be don't want to tell us that because we are being told, hey, stick to your planet. You can't come out of here. This is not a playground for you guys. You are not ready for this. So we're kind of I stuck believe that. in this reality. So you don't think you don't think there's a possibility that we're actually you know the higher ups are actually working with uh, alien species and and traveling beyond the stars and stuff like that. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I think I okay. think there is government governments that are in contact with other higher beings and are doing experiments on other planets in our own solar system and are traveling at you know at distances that we you know we're, we common folks are just not told about. It. Right. Okay. If we find out about this technology, if we have this disclosure, which we all want, mm-hmm. then guess what's going to happen? We're going to commercialize it. We're going to have uh, people with trillions of dollars are going to throw into like making you know these kind of uh, of aircrafts that can go to Mars in twenty days or in ten days or five days or or in twenty minutes or whatever. We'll have these people there say, "Well, the technology's there. Let's build it ourselves and let's commercialize this thing." And then that's where you run into these kind of problems where the maybe the powers that be don't want us up there because we're not ready for that kind of playground yet. So we are controlled into this little environment, and the governments that are involved with these beings are aware of what's going on, and that's part of the big old like this, you know disclosure they don't want to tell us, is because they know what's going on, but they're being told by whatever beings are being are telling them this that hey you just can't come back up here you can't do this on a mass scale we'll allow a few of you to come up here because you know we want to indoctrinate you into what really is going on and eventually one day maybe 100 years from now or 200 years from now maybe your society will be ready but let's be honest guys uh, we're still at war with each other down here on earth do you think that that logically speaking we're really ready to go out into space no. all of us no. and, it's why and I wish people would stop I mean you know not all of us no and I and I no, almost yeah. think yeah. I think that I think that it's possible for some of us to maybe communicate with the aliens, but it just, I mean, it's like you said, we're in a controlled environment and there's a test. And I think that, I think that there are some people who know the questions, maybe, can I at least get the questions to the test so I can study (laughs) something, anything? I I don't know. I don't know how it is, but you know, I, I, I'm on two, you know, I'm I'm on two scales with that because I definitely believe that there are probably maybe the not nice aliens that are working with the powers that be because the powers that be there, they're not nice. They're just not. If you look at the way the Earth is controlled, the powers that be are not nice people. So oh, no, definitely maybe some – you know what I'm saying? So definitely there's <laughs> some maybe aliens that communicate with them, and they're in the not nice club. And then I think there's a whole other breed of aliens that are probably helping keep the quarantine around planet Earth that are just like – they're just waiting for us to grow up because we we're like yeah. little kids running around with scissors, and we need to grow up. 
That's but, exactly but, what, but, what I think it is. Yeah. But growing up, we have parents that teach us and and show us sort what's of. right and wrong. Well, most of us. Well, uh, 50-50, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, nowadays, but yeah, you, for the you most get part. you get what I'm saying. I mean, uh, so why why would not the the aliens not guide Where us, the help us? Right. You know. Uh, they can float above us. They can do whatever. I mean, we're not going to harm them in any way. They're the almighty, the powerful. They can do what they wish, pretty much. Um, so why not guide us, uh, get us to that point uh, to get us out of what we're doing? I mean, even they are seeing what's going on here. Uh, you know, and, and they got to be looking at it going, like you said, you guys aren't ready. This, you guys are too. There's too much war, too much greediness. You, you, you know. It, it, so okay. So help us, guide us. You've made it to that point. We need help. Otherwise, we're going to die out again and start all over. So I. That's kind of where I'm at with it. I, I kind of don't get that part of it. I think we need guidance if it's there. Yeah, I, I I hear you, and that mm. and that's really a tough one. And yeah. you know, I struggle with it too a lot because I'm like I'm a very spiritual person, um, and you know, you have days where you feel very connected and everything, and you're like, oh, I understand mm-hmm. that the test is now, and then you have other days where you don't know. So I I don't think that there's never been an answer. You know, I just I don't know. I don't know if it's a if it's if it's a personal journey type deal, if it's, you know, they've been trying to talk and we're just not listening, if it's, you know, would we even believe what the answer was? You know, let's let's, you know, just say, for example, that that happened to you, Dina, that tomorrow night, you know, the alien came down and told you exactly what you needed to do. You know, mm-hmm. like, how do you and then you wrote a book about it. I mean, there've been so many I'm looking at. There's like 20 of them on my bookshelf right now. And yeah. these could be, the, you know, like I've got a chakra book. I've got a book about dispelling wet go. I've got a book called the Pleiadian Agenda. I've got a book. I mean, I'm literally, you know, I've got well, you would secret definitely, teachings she's of She's got all books. Ages. Yeah. I've got yeah. them all, you know. So, I mean, is the answer in one of these? Very possibly. Well, I tell you, you what, know? if you would see somebody in such a different state of being, than anybody you've ever seen in your life, that I would be almost maniacal because I would be like, if they told me that and gave me information and said, it's yours to do what you wish, write a book, do it. I would be going, no, we need more as a species. We need more. I am not going to write a book. People will not technically believe it. I need right. you. I need something to be done. Um, and I would be telling the people this. I mean, if I even came out after they told me, I, I don't even know if I would say I, I would probably go, you know, what? they're not going to believe me anyways. I'm not writing a book. If you need me to get this information out, come up with a better plan. There's got to be a better way, which is why I doubt folks like Sheldon Nidal and people like this, that uh, they claim they were taken to this uh, Andromeda place and. The Galactic mm. Federation of Light took them and indoctrinated them into their their ways of life and told them, "Listen, you got to go back to Earth now, and you got to write about this. You got to inform others." Well, if that's the case, then why aren't they just informing everybody at once? Yeah, you know why? Why pick this one dork and tell him, "Yeah, you got to enlighten everybody. You are the guy. You who mm-hmm. were su- the suspenders and uh, and you look like a pedophile. You are the guy." Who's going to go down there, and you are going to tell everybody in a book because we want people to read in a book what we are thinking. It's hard to believe. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you see stuff like that, you know, it, it boggles the mind how people will believe it. But again, here's the thing: uh, I don't think we're ready for it. And it's the same. It's just kind of like the same scenario as us going to our backyard and try to, you know, start up a conversation with a bunch of ants or, uh, you know, our, our lower life form. Because to them, we still are that lower life form. I think what they're waiting for is for us to grab, you know, graduate from a type zero civilization to a type one civilization, not blow ourselves to smithereens from zero to one, and kind of like get that actual graduation from one to the other, and become a space-bearing race where we're now not at war with each other, but we're more progressive and we're more enlightened here on Earth, and we're at peace with each other, and there's mm-hmm. no more religion. 
uh, or religious wars because, you know, our God is better than your God or my God is a bigger penis than your God or whatever it is. <laughs> right. You know, there's none of that anymore. It's more about, hey, we're human beings. We're on earth. We got to love each other. We got to live with each other. We got to support each other. We got to, you know, but what do some of us do? I think that's the test. And I I really, you know, and I really, really do. And I I think that really is the biggest one. How can we get there? How? Right. I mean, if if you just break it down to that level, because I I hear the frustration in your voice, like people are evil and I'm tired of listening to it, too. So I've just stopped looking. (laughs) I mean, that's why I'm very, very, very big that we it's. It almost is, it's and it's harsh. very hard not to see it like a conspiracy because and it's one of right. the reasons why I stopped watching the mainstream news because I almost hit a mm-hmm. point where oh, I, I just it, yeah. I, a, 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 a switch flipped, and it's almost like I was a different person watching this. And I remember sitting in my living room watching everybody look at the news, and I'm looking at the news, and I'm like, why are we listening to this? This is the biggest load of shit I've ever heard in my life. And then, like, all i got to do is go to Yahoo, and there are 20 stories about the worst thing that ever happened to humanity in that day. And there's never a threat of the good. There's never a threat of people doing something else. Like it never right. happens. And I know that's not true. I know 100% that's right. not true because I, I go course. and I find those stories. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so it's almost like mm, maybe that is the test. That's, that's you know, it's funny test. though, Crystal. When you go like on Facebook timeline or on Facebook, you see a lot of people post really cool stuff that people do for each other. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Nice stories. Oh, you actually great. see that a lot. We're we are posting those kind of things. Yeah, absolutely. So Not the media. The media is always posting the negative stuff that happens uh, yes. because that's what sensationalism sells. You know, the, the crazy evil stuff that sells magazines and so yep. the news makes people want to watch right that's why i haven't are, watched the news in years man right but there's oh. a lot of people that sit there glued to their tvs watching every episode of cnn that, that comes on because they want to see this stuff look we had just we just had a bombing this past week in new york and jersey and mm-hmm. in minneapolis minnesota i mean we've had bombings that are terrorist activity in our own country okay and what's been the, the narrative for the last uh, few months now that uh, President Obama and Hillary Clinton want to let in all these Syrian uh, Muslims to our country that are part of a hotbed where terrorist activity has been taking place, where they're breeding terrorists. So, in other words, we're letting people in who might be terrorists, and we're and I think it was like mm-hmm. 800 or so um, Ill- illegal uh, Muslims were given citizenships because of a mistake, quote unquote, right? Uh, and these all were from the places where terrorist activity is taking place around the planet, you know. We're bringing that into our country, so we're bringing in the evil to our to our country. We cause That's the a evil. It's a catch twenty two. We're causing it. Exactly. We've, be, we've become it. a very weak country. Very weak. I'm not saying that we need to be dictators and you know put our, but we, we to a point need to. We, we we become a weak country. That's all I'll no, say. No, it's not. It's not being a dictator, and and it's not evil to want to protect your country. Exactly. Uh, that's actually. No, that's actually want to good. But we don't country, want to offend anybody. So no, if we want to protect the country, then we need to stop doing things that make people want to bomb us. That's step one. You that's talk it. about respecting our neighbors and finding that love and peace on earth, and this, that, and the other. It's. I mean, it's exactly that type of fear. It's exactly these types of a conversations. It's not understanding that we caused ISIS. It's our Arguing, it's it literally. It literally. I'm gonna get real angry here because it is literally <laughs> watching the media bitch that Donald Trump's wife stole a speech when that very same day President Obama dropped a drone that killed 75 Syrian children. Mm. 75. Right. And then you wonder why vices can recruit on fucking Twitter. Like, are you kidding right. me? We caused this. So I don't want to hear anybody be like, oh, my God, they hate us. They're horrible. This, that, and the other. Shut up. We caused it. First, so and, until and, and we, we get our own government and our own people in check, we need to stop speaking. Yeah. no, And you know what? The WikiLeaks just came out with uh, some information that Hillary Clinton sold weapons to ISIS. We do it all the time. And see, and that's Surprise. one of the reasons why I think it's a big racket because then we sit here and we like, we got to get in Trump or we got to get in Hillary and you're still supporting the very government that's playing you. Stop it. Correct. Stop doing exactly. it. Stop it. We, I mean, like you said, Jackal, we have to go to Facebook to find the good news because we're the only people that's, that's posting it. If we don't mm-hmm. start supporting each other, we will never get out of the suck. 
We just won't. That, that's 100% won't. true. But at, at the same time, with all that said, uh, you still got to protect the country. You still got to, and you know, I'm all for protecting the borders. Uh, and, and it's not racist to say that, you know, building a wall might be a good idea because guess what? Other countries have walls protecting their borders. Shocker, mm-hmm. I know. Yep. Mexico has a, a wall protecting its borders from illegal aliens. Guess what they do when Mexicans, uh, when they, when they capture illegal aliens, guess what they do? They deport them back to their country. That's what mm-hmm. they do. So how is it racist that we want to build a border, uh, that Trump wants to build a wall? That's not racist. That's being logical because there is a problem with illegals coming into this country. And it's not just happening through Mexico. It's coming in through the Muslim countries. It's coming in through you know South American countries. Illegals are happening everywhere. I worked at a place recently where they had like four people that were illegal working there. Fact. Hmm. I know this for a fact because I deal with these people. One of the girls there was kind of. What cute. you know? What but guess what? It's a fact. <laughs> you know what kind of a Angel. you want? You want to talk about the test that the aliens want to put us through? You know what? Just list, you just called someone illegal. You called a human being illegal. Think about because that. Because they second. are no, but they oh, are illegal really? in this country. They are. Oh. They came to this country. They broke well, the we law. We better start erasing borders. We need to figure that out real quick. There's things called laws. Hold on, there's things yeah. called laws, and and if you're going to live in a society, you got to you got to you got to go by the laws, and the law mm-hmm. is you got to become oh the very law that lets cops shoot black people. You see what I'm saying? Come on, no, now. but see that's not the, that's not the law. That's just stupid assholes that are yeah, doing that's it. Bad and, not, and look, and not every and not, that's bad people exactly. Mm-hmm. That's a bad apple in a, in, a, in a bigger seed. But here's the problem, okay? Not every cop is bad. Not every cop wants to kill a black person. No. Not that's every just, Muslim yeah, is bad. Not every Muslim wants I, to kill a I person. I understand that. Exactly. But everybody, that's very true. But everybody who comes in illegally is breaking the law. Every 100% maybe of them are breaking the law. Maybe we need to change the law. Well, yeah. Or I mean, maybe you, you gotta we need think to, about or it is, maybe uh, we need to protect our borders so we don't have these illegals coming in, bringing right. drugs, bringing crime, because that is happening. Yes. Go ahead, Dino. Oh, no, just I was going to just say because our country, I mean, you, the laws are there, certain ones like the illegal aliens coming in. They, people take advantage of what we offer in this country. Exactly. And that's why I'm saying we're a weak country. We don't enforce it. It's not that we don't want people here. Uh, we love everybody to come here and get all the everything that you could possibly get your dreams in, in, in America like it used you to be. You won't find like, them in America. Don't come here. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, that's, but, not, that's not true. I'd rather be here than be in Syria or be in Iraq or be in Afghanistan or be in any of these Muslim countries or, or Middle Eastern countries right now because yeah, it because is then really bad them. out there. You're right. Well, besides you that. have to deal with, but here's, with, here's the thing. Yeah, with your president. The same president, <laughs> the, yeah, but the same president who's bombing them is saying, all right, now you guys you can come over. I know you're pissed at us, but come on over. We're going to make you citizens. It's going to be okay. And then when I leave office, you can do whatever the hell you want to this country. Well, that's just, you know, we, that's a deeper subject, though, to where we, it just comes with evil. Again, I, I'm telling you, we're, when you come from a third world country where uh, they can't even get bread on the table for their kids and their children, um, you're going to raise a family of soldiers. You're going to have them. Uh, if you know nothing else but what you're doing and you're being taught by grown-ups and the people that are there, that's all you're going to live. So you can breed hatred, you can raise hatred, and it's not almost not their fault to a point because they don't know no different. And that's just, again, I think is just the evil of being human on this planet because – could we all get together and share the wealth, share the dreams? We could. Um, it's just that's just the way it is. So I don't see it as, you know, they're just rotten terrorists. So it, they're they're brought up that way, and there's they can't help it. It's just the way it is. Um, you got people in charge who do nothing to help these you know, out of control population growths. And you, you, you know what I'm saying? It's just, there's nothing you could do. Evil is there and it's always going to be there until we transform as a human race and all work together. Um, that's what I think it comes down to. It's true. That's it just does. the way it is. Things will yeah. be the same. <laughs> that's just the way it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Angel's got a great singing voice there. You cutting the record the today? Yeah, so beautiful. <laughs> Things will never be the same. That's a little Tupac for you. Changes, maybe. Uh, Changes. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, it's uh, one day. Like we, we, live, we live in a screwed up world, and this we is do. exactly <laughs> why the aliens do not talk to us while That's we're exactly quarantined. Why. <laughs> because we're in a screwed up world where we still think that uh, other people and other races and other cultures are different from us, so they must be bad. No, it's not, you know, Muslims are not bad because they're Muslims. Muslims can be bad because of the way that we have treated them. Mm. Uh, Muslims can be radicalized because of the very nature of their religion, uh, teaches them that, hey, if you're not from this religion, you're evil. So you got to kill the infidel. That's part of the religion, folks. I hate to break it to you, but that's actually part of the religion. Read the Quran. Right. The Quran is one of the most twisted books you're ever going to read. I've read it. It's a uh, twisted I don't know. book. I don't know. I think, I think you twisted. put the Quran and the Bible next to each other, and they could they could have a fight. Oh, no, they're pretty. They're both pretty <laughs> twisted. I'm not going to lie. They're both pretty twisted. But the Quran literally says that a good Muslim is a Muslim who fights the infidel to his death if he does not transform to the ways of Allah into the uh, into uh, oh, basically but there, Islam. You know what? There are plenty of just lines like that in the Bible too. I mean, I mean, you know, it's just religion sucks. Let's just let's just let's just put it to you that way. Religion That's sucks. That's my because, point exactly. You know, it just sucks. It. Does <laughs> you know what are good if books? The Vampire Chronicles. You, the Vampire Chronicles are good. There books. you go. Speaking of books, <laughs> change Wait, the subject a little bit. Read a, a better bit. book, y'all. Read a better book. <laughs> yes. And you know what? Speaking of uh, uh, ants under the petri dish, and that's what we are. You, you, you know what we do? I, or I did when I was a young kid. I would buy one of those ant farms, and I would feed it, and I would do everything possible to make its life better, and watch how it lives. I, I did observe it, but I also helped it. I fed it. I, I did everything I could to make it the coolest place it could possibly be, connect it with another one. So why aren't the aliens doing that if we're under that Petri mm. dish? But Maybe anyways, they are. We just don't know it. They could be. Maybe That's they true. are. Yeah. You never yeah. know. Thanks for your question. Uh, yeah. Your question. Sadly, we're all out of time. In fact, we're over. Uh, oh, no. Over here. <laughs> uh, it's been a fascinating show, uh, it, you know. Thanks for for being here with us, man. And uh, uh, for please, me. by all by all means, give out your uh, times so people can you know listen to your show and watch you on uh, on YouTube. Give your YouTube channel, your, your website address. Uh, give everybody everything so they can go ahead and follow you, bro. <laughs> Okay, it's not about that, but I'll give it all out. Um, it's all about you right now, bro. It's all about, <laughs> it's all about you. you. Plug it, do it. I, do I, it. I love I love talking with you guys, Angel and, and Crystal, but um. Hey, all you got to do is search Paranormal Into the Night. Um, it's a Facebook group. It's the name of uh, on Spreaker. If you Paranormal Into the Night, it'll come up. iTunes, if Apple Store, Paranormal Into the Night. Uh, so, you know, subscribe. It'll come up. You'll get every episode. And our shows are every Thursday and Friday, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern time. And hmm. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, we're growing, so it's it's small right now. I know Angel wants me to come over here. We'll see. We'll talk. But um, yeah. I'll um, also tell you, if I could throw this out there, if you like horror, because I love what I do with my YouTube channel, The Late Late Horror Show, if you like horror movies, subscribe to us there, too, on YouTube. It's, uh, you know, we talk a new horror movie every week. Halloween's coming up. So have some fun, fun with us. Yeah, I, I love doing that. So anyways, that's me. Paranormal Into the Night, it'll pop up. So There you cool. go. Good job. Yeah. What are you going to be uh, discussing this Halloween? Anything in particular? Um, well, I know I'll be doing a marathon at some point, and I, I've said this. I'm not sure how long I'll stay on. I'm going to get as many spooky guests as I can since I do the, the horror show on YouTube. Uh, there's a mm-hmm. few people I can pull over to talk about. Um, Halloween and, and some other horror movies and stuff like that. And then a couple people to talk about some spooky stuff. So we'll, we'll see how that goes down. I will, I will put that on my Paranormal Tonight Facebook group, uh, page. And, um, yeah, so, so definitely there's a lot going on. I love for Halloween. It's my favorite time of the year. There you go. Good, good times. Yeah. Uh, guys, we're going to be back next week with another fascinating guest. I'm sure of it. Uh, they are, they always are fascinating guests. So show. fascinating. Uh, Sky Watchers Radio, like I always say, stay safe, stay classy, but by all means, stay looking up to the skies because you might see something.
people pick and choose right who they want to deal with who's going to give them the most although i don't know how much belgab really you know put that thing out there art could have done any show and it would have got spread around so right. i don't know yeah but i, I mean, get here, you man the, but here's here's the thing your show is a good show i think we do a good show here uh, we no, all no. love Art Bell. That, that's the that's the best thing, you know. The most. Oh the most yeah, we all we'll love Art Bell. We're mm-hmm. going to give him, you know, every every uh, opportunity to say what he wants to say. Uh, mm-hmm. We weren't going to, you know, especially on this show, we weren't going to be controversial, to, you know, with him or talk about right. something he didn't mm-hmm. want to get to. Uh, so it's going to be a very honest and uh, loving, you know, episode dealing with art and his history and, and stuff and. And, mm-hmm. you know, for him to close those channels and say, nah, you know, I don't want to do the show because I'm not going to interview you or whatever the excuse is. To me, yeah. it's kind of cheap on his part. Because, like I told you when you invited me on your show, there's no way I'll say no to somebody who's asking me to be on their show. Because to me, that's a hell of an honor to be asked to be on somebody's show because that means that they want to hear from me. They, they, they care enough to ask me to be on their show. You know, you have to stay humble also when you do this kind of stuff. And I'm a humble person. If anybody asks me, hey, can you be on my show? I'm going to do it because, you know, it's somebody asking, putting themselves out there and asking, why would I want to break that person's heart and, you know, they just go against what they, you know, they're asking for. That, to me, is ridiculous, especially, I'm nobody special, and at the end of the day, Art Bell, yeah, he's a great personality, we love his radio show, but he's mm-hmm. just another guy. Oh, he's right. Just, yeah. Dude, he's just an old man living in Nevada or somewhere. <laughs> you know, let's just, let's be real on what it is. You know, at the end of the day, that's who Art Bell is. And he should be a little bit more humble than that. That's you know, my take on the whole thing. I still love you, Art. I still, you know, I wish you were on the air. I wish, you know, you hadn't retired for good for the 18th same here. time. Yep, but, you know, same it here. is what it is. It is what it is, man. Now, uh, getting on to your show, um, let's talk a little bit about your show because you deal with, by the way, you're making a whole lot of noise. Are you rattling around there? Or are you wrestling with alligators? What's going on? Over there? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, there's some spirits around me right now flying around. So, um, this you first time it? this ever happened. But, uh, I get, I get no, you. no, I, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, I was having you said issues that's so with. serious, too. I was like, I know, oh, I know, man. Really? We're back on Skywatchers Radio after a couple minutes of technical difficulties. We made it back on the air. I'm telling you, when you're going to deal with paranormal stuff, you better expect some paranormal activities to happen. And I think that's what's going on with Skype tonight. It's just having all kind of paranormal you know, things happening to it. And it's just, it's bizarre. It's weird. It's right up there with the stuff we like to cover, right? The bizarre and the weird. And uh, you know who else is into the bizarre and the weird? Our guest tonight, Dino Ewald, who is the host of Paranormal Into the Night Radio. And uh, he's a hell of a, of a nice guy, too. He's a founder of PITN Network. And, uh, you know, I, I was on his show not long ago. Uh, he has a fabulous uh, show. And uh, hopefully one day he'll be off of Spreaker and on PSN Radio. You never know. Uh, Dino, welcome to Sky Watchers Radio, my friend. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Ah, thank you, Angel. And Crystal, how are you doing? I'm I good. Almost didn't nice think talking it was to happen. you. <laughs> we almost did not <laughs> think it was going to happen. Yeah, that close, that close. But it, we got it going, so it's all good. That's oh right. Goodness. That's how we roll. We make it miracles. Yeah. There you go. Cool. <laughs> Now, I first became aware of you, Dino, when uh, you reached out to me uh, a while back, and you're like, hey, dude, uh, can you be on my show? And I was like, what? <laughs> Do you do it on the bottom of me? What's wrong with you, kid? You want me on your show? What's wrong with you, son? But then you you're, had me on, and it was, it was awesome. Well, you were great. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think I got a different kind of style, I guess. You know, I mean, we're all different, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I asked the questions, and, um yeah, you were a great guest, man. That that was actually a really, really good show. And yeah, I was uh, thinking maybe you were going to pull an Art Bell there and you know say, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm a better uh, interviewee than an interviewer, whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, we won't get into that. But uh, yeah, you know, we, I, 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 it's funny because we brought, I brought that up earlier on the, the beginning. I don't know if you heard the beginning of the show, but I kind of yeah, I was listening. Day. Yeah, and I know you had a similar experience with Mr. Bell. <laughs> yes, and, I did. Uh, and you actually uh, you inspired him in a way to uh, to open up a line uh, for uh, for stuff on his show early on when he came back to Dark Matter, which I want yeah. you to tell the audience about because I thought it was really cool. Tell the audience, go for it. 
Oh God. Uh, well, yeah. When, when um, Art Bell first came on, I mean, we did talk back and forth a little bit through uh, messaging on Facebook and all that, uh-huh. and and of course, very aware of uh, Paranormal Into the Night Facebook group. And um, I wanted him to go. I mean, I think you guys know when he came back, he was the show wasn't the same. It was a little different. I really still wanted that spookiness, that little dark, you know, thing that he had to his show, and uh, he kept. His open lines were, or special lines that he would do on, I think, the Friday nights or whatever, were not the best. I mean, one night he was asking me about names for the open lines, and I gave him stuff like, you know, Vampire Hotline, uh, stuff like that. And uh, he came back and um, just really did not listen to anything I uh, had to offer. And he opened up a Losing My Mind line, okay? First of all, uh, I think we're all losing our mind a little bit, but anyway. Just a little bit, yeah, just a little bit. A little bit. Especially with this election going on right now. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, I don't think Jesus, Hillary. Jesus. Anyway. (sighs) Mr. Losing your mind line. But, but yeah, uh, (laughs) yeah, he he went with that, and I'm like going, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And everybody started coming on talking about, I'm losing my mind because my girlfriend's doing this to me or this. I'm like going, what does this have to do with the paranormal? And uh, so I said, you know what, I'm going to call. And this was when uh, when I first started my my Paranormal to the Night Facebook group, it was technically Art Bell live chat because it was all about Art Bell's show. And that's right, how right. all of this started. And we were chatting back and forth. And I swear to God, we'd have a thousand posts Every night for our show, for Art Bell's show, just going back and forth. Well, I'll tell you, that's exactly what happened to me. I mean, because I did, I mean, and and I'm not not making it out more than it was. It was just Facebook, a message back and forth, back and forth, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I think at the time he was reaching out to as many groups as he can to, because we, the live chats popped up in tons of groups. I think you probably know that. I mean, there was, uh, our, I mean, there's still Heather Wade, you know, groups and stuff for people to chat, although five people chat a night. But um, mm-hmm. not, put, not putting her down or nothing. I'm just, you know, it's a whole different ball game now in the, uh, yeah. you know, in, in that whole, you know, uh, program and stuff. But um, he, he I, I said, did the same thing. I, I said, hey, Art, why don't you come on here and... You know, let me interview you. I, I I won't talk about any of the controversy, any of this. I just want to talk paranormal with you. And he said the same thing. He said, uh, yeah. "I'm I'm you know not very good at doing interviews. I am much better at giving interviews." So yeah, same exact thing. So and it's like it's like more stupid because I, he's been on like Bill Gab uh, the radio show. Well, th- that's Gab what I was going to say. I th- you must have asked right around the same time I did because I swear it was a couple days later or so he was on Belgab and he put it all out there. He 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 did a great interview. He he even told um uh, what was his name uh, on Belgab? I forget his name, but uh, he, he said this. Mike? No, he was the guy. I think he's from another country, Australia or oh. Jazz Jazz Munda. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, and uh, he, he told him, he said, the, or no, maybe it was his co-host or whatever, but nevertheless, he said, this is going to be one of those shows that will go on forever, right? Like he's a biography or something like that. And I'm like going, oh, you know, <laughs> why couldn't you just come on and talk to me? You know, it would have been one of my, you know, bucket list things. And, yeah, I mean, I, I understand if he just does not want to do that kind of thing, but... Just like everybody, he picks not everybody, but certain people. It was unbelievable. That's was one of the greatest things that when it first started rolling. But um, they're like, go ahead, call in, call in, call in. So I did, and they never knew about it, at, you know, because they really didn't think it was me. But I called in as a vampire, okay, and I told Art I was losing my mind, and I, I'm not patting myself on the back or nothing, but I did a hell of a job. Anybody can go look it up on YouTube under, I think, Midnight in the Desert uh, YouTube channel and just put in Vampire uh, 
Midnight in the Desert, Art Bell, whatever. It'll pop up, I, or, or I could put the link somewhere. But I did an awesome job. I was losing my mind because hmm. something attacked me in the night, in the woods, um, and I was losing my mind because of the thirst I needed, the, the blood. And I was turning as I was talking to Art. And he was just, like, going with it for a good 10, 15 minutes. Um, and then he finally had enough, and he said, hmm, that's really, you know, just hung up, you know, after, you know, a certain amount of time. But it, it was actually, everybody said, that's probably the best thing I've heard since the frantic Area 51 caller. And um, I have to agree, I'm one of the biggest Art Bell fans there is out there from the very beginning. And I had to put something into the show to make it exciting and make it what it used to be. And that's probably the highlight of the me and Art's relationship, you know, over the years. So, yeah, I did do that, and it was very, very interesting and very cool. So, yeah. Now, yeah, it's funny because I think we're, we've all been kind of influenced by art. You know, the reason right. I got into radio to begin with was because of Art Bell. You know, we talked about that on, on your show. Mm -hmm. uh, the host that influenced me was, you know, Art Bell was one of the main ones. Phil Hendry, George Rodriguez, yep. Neil Rogers, <laughs> the guys who really influenced me to get into doing this stuff. Uh, but art, there was nothing bigger than Art Bell, really. Art Bell, you know, for this oh. genre, is the biggest thing ever. Yeah. Um, and it's funny that, you know, my interaction is a lot lesser cooler than yours. My interaction with him is like, yeah, I'm not a good radio interviewee. I, uh, I'm just a good radio interviewer. 